And joining us now to discuss is legal consultant Wendy Patrick and attorney Christine Flowers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, ladies, Christine, I want to start with you. I mean, the, the new, you know, we keep hearing about the normal and when will it get normal again, but who knows? And this is such a difficult time, especially for families during the holidays. They can't see a lot of their loved ones. They can't see friends and it's hard for kids to understand. It really is. Hi, Allison. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Tom. Good to see everyone. Um, it's very difficult at this time of year um, to not be excited, to not have some sense of awe. It's Christmas, it's Hanukkah, it's, it's the joyful season. And I, I mean, as human beings, we have this natural optimism, I think. Um, that's best seen in children, because those are the ones that are able to resist the, the normal, um, the, the difficulties that we see that have been caused by this pandemic. So I think we need to model children. I think we need to allow them to be their authentic selves. Um, I wrote a column about that, a little boy who wanted a Nerf gun from Santa, and Santa said, oh, you're not getting a gun. And the miracle of Christmas was that the little boy ultimately did get his Nerf gun because they realized the, uh, the mall Santa um, resigned and the uh, other Santa that was hired came and delivered the gun because he wanted to deliver something more than just a toy. He wanted to deliver hope and normalcy and the spirit of Christmas. So I think that's what we need to do. We need to hold on to those traditions and look at everything through the eyes of a child. Wendy, obviously this country is not only politically divided, but also with the governors have varying restrictions. And I believe you're in San Diego. So is, is the California and San Diego going to be any different this Christmas? And how would you recommend uh, you know, the families carry on, especially in a state that's being really, really restrictive? Yeah, that's right. Tom and Allison and uh, Christine hit on this as well. Resiliency really is the, the name of the game when it comes to how are we going to celebrate the holidays this season. And it really has to do with creativity. That has been something that's characterized the holiday season this year. Pandemic protocol, okay, that's changed the rules of engagement, but only insofar as how, when, where, and how close. We can still bond through brainstorming in terms of coming up with new ways, with new traditions as to how we can celebrate together. And there's been some great suggestions that are percolating on the internet if you want to have a look. Everything from ugly math contests to <laughs> app watching parties and, and Christmas caravans where everybody's on speakerphone. You know, one thing we've all become, even adults, is how we can come up with new ways to spend Christmas together. But I want to pick up on something Christine said as well. This has been characterized this season by resiliency and we are homebound but hopeful because one of the things we're celebrating as we bring, uh, justifiably so, to 2020 to an end, to a resounding end, is we finally have a vaccine on the horizon. So we are looking at new ways to celebrate a new 2021 and who's to say some of the traditions that we aren't establishing this year, whether it's in person or virtually, won't carry forward as we all have really enjoyed getting to know our family members and really bonding with that extra time. That's what I call the pandemic silver lining, is the time we've had with family that some of us have never had before and may never have again. Yeah, uh, Christine, I like that, the silver lining, um, because, uh, you know, being a mom and prior to the, the pandemic, we were running around and didn't have time for dinner. And now all of a sudden we have a lot of time for dinner together. But, uh, you know, we, we talk about, um, Christine, we talk about creativity uh, and what can families do if they can't see each other? Are, are, are we getting on Skype? Are we are we doing Zooms? How can we involve family, especially for, for you know, older folks? You know, and, and I, I love what Wendy just said about some of the ideas, the ugly mask, face mask uh, competitions as opposed to the ugly sweaters. We are adaptable. We're chameleons. Americans uh, are, are able to deal with adversity. That, that we show that uh, our finest uh, character in the most difficult moments. Um, I personally, I have uh, someone in my family who has a pre-existing condition. And so I've actually left my home and put distance between us by staying at an apartment in Center City, Philadelphia, whereas my, my, um, my homestead is outside of the city. And the way I keep in touch is through FaceTiming. And, you know, FaceTiming a 12-year-old nephew can be a lot of fun because he's never in the screen at the same time. He's always bouncing around. But I think that the technologies that we have are amazing. 
to keep us connected, as long as we know that at the end of this, our families and our friends are still going to be there. And we will one, you know, one day be able to touch out, reach them, and hold them again. And in the meantime, we just speak through portals, but um, the heart is the same. The technology is just creating something, creating a way for us to do what we normally would, and that is communicate the love that we have for each other. Wendy, we only have about 15 seconds. Any real special advice quickly, what uh, people, parents can do for their children who have really been hard hit this year? Yes, absolutely. We need to be mindful that health includes emotional health. And sometimes we make assumptions about our children without asking them, what would you like to do? What do you feel about this? Sometimes there's a stigma around mental health, even with young people. Sometimes it, you know, it just takes a minute to